let's take a look at the new data component system and let's talk about item stacks. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, fans, back in general once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about item stacks as well as the new data component type system. So that is basically the system that has more or less basically is the upgrade from the NBT system, although I will actually show you that you literally just can use NBT data still with the new system, so it is more or less backwards compatible, so that is pretty cool. But firstly, just the tiniest bit of theory here behind it. So last time we've seen the block states and block sort of divide, and now we continue with item and item stacks. So the idea is as follows. If you have a, let's just do shift, press shift twice and look for the items class. Just include non-project items. I'm going to choose the one from net Minecraft item, this one right here. And we look for the diamond underscore sword right here. But this is a sword item and we can see the sword item is created multiple times, right? However, the diamond sword over here that exists once as a static item over here. However, if I have three different diamond swords in my inventory, and I take the first one and I slay a hundred zombies, then only the first one is going to get durability damage. Now you might say, yeah, Kalmundo, that's obvious. Once again, you got to remember that just because it's intuitively obvious, you have to make it understandable so that you can also articulate it. Each individual stack is a new instance of this diamond sword item over here. Right? And that is the difference between an item and an item stack. The stack is like inside of the inventory, the actual individual stack. And that is the thing that we are going to, well, change basically, where we will add a, we will add that particular data component. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a data component to our chisel over here. So literally what I want to do is when we right click a particular block and we change it, I just want to add the coordinates there and basically just say, hey, this is the last coordinates that were changed. That's literally all I want to do. And for that, we're actually going to make a custom data component. So then you also know how to register those and things like that. For this, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called component over here. There you go. And then here we'll make a new Java class called the mod data component types. There you go. And this is going to look like the following. We're going to have a public static void register data component types method over here with once again a tutorial mod dot logger. And then we're just going to call info over here, registering data component types for tutorial mod dot mod ID. This is of course, once again, not strictly necessary. They have the logger in here, but I do like that. And then we're going to call this. So this is going to be the mod data component types that register data component types. And then we need a register method for the helper method. There's going to be a private static, then a angle bracket uppercase T component type from net Minecraft component of type T calling this register, then passing in as parameters a string name as well as a unary operator of type component type dot builder of type T. Sounds pretty crazy, but it is true. This is the builder operator. The code, as always, of course, is available down below. And in this method, we're going to return registry, making sure we choose net micro registry. Extremely important. Do not choose Java RMI. You want to choose net micro registry. Then dot register registries, registries dot data underscore component underscore type and identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod ID passing in the name. And after the first closing parentheses, we want to call builder operator dot apply passing in component type dot builder this time the method. And after the last closing parenthesis, nope, after the second closing parenthesis, we're going to call the build method and then ending with a semicolon. There you go. So that is the helper method that's going to basically be called every time we add a new data component. Uh, just for the sake of argument, let's go and once again, press shift twice. And we're going to look at the, is it the data components? I'm pretty sure, or component types actually. Data component types class over here. Here we can see all of the different data components that exist in vanilla. There's actually quite a few as you can see. And one of the really interesting ones is the first one. That is the custom data right here. You can even see this is an NBT component, right? Now, if I go into this NBT component, you can see that literally it has an NBT compound over here. I mean, it could not be easier. You literally just create it by saying NBT component dot of and then passing in a new NBT compound. So basically the general like data component, right? The NBT one is still like backwards compatible. You can still literally just use this with the custom data over here. However, in our case, we actually want a completely new type over here. And that's going to be a public static final. 
components type of type, and this is the type of data that is stored on there. Now, when you have a type of data that you store on a for a component type, you have to have a codec for that specific type of data. In this case, we want to use the block pause, which is literally just the block position. In this case, we're going to call this the coor coordinates. There you go. Equal to the register method that we just made. Coordinates. There you go. And then the second parameter is going to be a unary operator. So we're just going to say builder. Then the little arrow over here. And then we're going to say builder.codec passing in block pause.codec. And there we go. So you can see that we basically need to specify a specific codec because the component types are serialized and deserialized via the codex, right? So that has to happen. So that is going to be the case for this. So if you want to make a custom class that imp like implements any of this, that totally works, but you need to have a codec for it so that it like basically is able to completely serialize and deserialize that particular class. But with this done, we can now go on to the chisel item and actually add stuff to it. So like I said, we want to add stuff to the item stack. So for this, we want to do context.getStack. And now here, this is you're going to say, wait, this is how easy it is. You can set a specific data component by calling the set method, as you can see. You then pass in the type, so mod data component types dot coordinates, and then whatever the value is, in this case, context.get block pause. Done. And with this, literally just with this one line, we've now saved every time we right click with a chisel item, right? So we have a chisel item in our inventory. We have it in our hand. I right click a block to change it. And now on that particular item stack, the coordinates are saved that I just right clicked. And to basically be able to tell this, we're going to append a tooltip for this as well. So we're going to say if the stack over here get, and then we're going to get the data component of mod data component types dot coordinates. If that is unequal to null, so exclamation mark equals null, right? So this means it is unequal to null. It is not null because if we control left click on the get method, you can see that this is nullable, meaning that if it doesn't exist, it just returns a null. Absolutely amazing. So we can say, hey, if it's not null, then what I want to do is I want to say tooltip.add and we're going to add this time a text.literal. I'm going to say last block changed at and this is going to be stack.get once again mod data component types dot coordinates and there we go. That's pretty much it. That's literally all we need to do in this case. And now we are going to have the coordinates displayed when we hover over the chisel item after we basically clicked it. This is super simple and super easy to use. I'm actually quite impressed with the new system. The only thing that is a little bit, let's say, of a bummer or a little bit of a thing is that you always need a codec and usually codecs can get very complicated very quickly. So that is just one thing that is a little bit of an issue. However, regardless of that, that's basically the idea. So this is how you can get a custom data component going. Like I said, you can also go if you do context.getStack and I set, right? I can also literally just use the data component types over here, right? And I can add any other data component type uh, of any different type over here. I basically just need to make sure that I obviously, well, create this, right? So if I have a lower component, I don't know how this works, right? But you can see there's like a lower component. Maybe I can create a new one. You can see new lower component and I can add like text lines. I don't even know what the lower component is. I, I, I don't actually don't know, but just for the sake of argument, right? So you can basically add however much data you want to whatever stack you want. And that can be very, very useful. And then also the last thing I want to show you is if you want to delete the data, you can literally just pass in a null over here and that then deletes the data off it again. Because if we go into the set method, you can see this is also nullable, meaning that if you pass a null over here, then the component is removed. Really freaking easy, really easy to use. With this done, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft and I have three chisels right here. And let's just see. Let's take the first chisel and just chisel an item. And if I now hover over the chisel, you can see last block changed at a minus 30, 65 and 231. And the same thing goes if I take another chisel and I go here, you can see this one minus 23, 64, 235. And you can see those are different because they are different item stacks. So that is the whole idea. And if I use this one you can see this one's also different and I can, of course, overwrite this. Right. So if I now were to take this one now, it is a different block position because obviously it overrides the position that was there before. But that is an idea of you know block states as well as custom data components. Awesome. As always, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, that's when we're going to add custom tools. Hope to see you there. So yeah.